Hey everybody, welcome back to Bioenergetic Basics, and today we're going to talk about how to use progesterone, specifically the Progest E product from Kenogen, which I'm not affiliated with, but I'm happy to promote. Before we get too far, the true method of knowledge is experiment, and William Blake said that, and in memory of Ray Pete and RayPete.com, and this is brought to you by my course, Bioenergetic Basics, that's on Patreon and Gumroad, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. And this is also brought to you by Progest E from Kenogen, and you can order that at Kenogen at gmail.com, and Ray Pete in 2018 said, I think it's the only good progesterone product. So for this episode, we're going to talk about a few things related to progesterone. We're going to talk about what does progesterone do. We're going to go over a visual dosing guide, which seems to be the most common question about using progest We're going to talk about using progest for women. We're going to talk about using progest for men. And we're going to talk about troubleshooting. So let's go over general steroid metabolism. We have T3, the active thyroid hormone, LDL cholesterol, vitamin A, and in the mitochondria of living cells, they produce pregnenolone, progesterone, and DHEA. And these are sometimes called the anti-stress hormones of youth or the youth-associated steroids. And then from DHEA, dihydroepiandrosterone, you further metabolize that into testosterone and DHT. So from the top to the bottom, you have steroid synthesis. And then from the left or the right, you have energy generation. And it's generally proposed that these steroids are protecting the generation of energy. And when these steroids start to be produced less often, for example, when the T3 is low or there's not sufficient cholesterol, or if there wasn't enough vitamin A, you're going to be exposed to more of the stress hormones that slow things down in an effort to go longer on less. And a side effect of slow slowing things down from dominant stress hormones is that your cells, tissues, and organs are more susceptible to injury. So this is from Progesterone Summaries by Ray Pete in 2007. And Ray says, progesterone is the most protective hormone the body produces. And the large amounts that are produced during pregnancy result from the developing baby's need for protection from the stressful environment. Normally, the brain contains a very high concentration of progesterone, reflecting its protective function for the most important organ. I'm a long way from fully understanding progesterone, but the first time I thought I made headway in understanding what Ray was talking about, why he thought it was so special, was when he referenced this paper from 1939. And the gist of this paper is that they adrenal lectomized rats. So they took out their adrenal glands and they could live as long as they were dosed with progesterone. It kind of shows how progesterone is this buffer from stress. You don't need your classical stress systems, the hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenals, if you have enough progesterone. And then when you stop producing the pregnenolone progesterone DHA, you have to rely on your adaptive stress systems. And these rats, when they were not not given progesterone, they would just die immediately when exposed to a stress. But if they have enough progesterone, they could live indefinitely. So here's another quote from Ray talking about the opposition of progesterone to estrogen and basically that they're extreme opposites. And he says, the effects of estrogen and progesterone are systemically opposed to each other. Estrogen excites, progesterone calms. Estrogen cools, progesterone heats. Estrogen increases nitric oxide, progesterone lowers it. And then I included this photo. This is the textbook of endocrinology 1947 by Hans Selye. And I was so proud of myself because Ray had mentioned this photo and I had found it. It's a rat Hans Selye and his group tried to kill. And I think they gave the rat the equivalent of 10,000 milligrams for a 150 pound person. And they could not kill the rats. Hans Selye's students thought they had killed the rats. So they threw them in the trash. And then the next day Hans Selye came in and he found that they were still alive. They were just profoundly relaxed. So we talked about the general anti-stress effects that progesterone has, but on a high level, I think progesterone is ordering the water of the cell. And so this is from another email. And Ray said, I think cells, when they are stimulated and active, have their water in a disordered state, similar to ordinary water. But when they are in the resting state and able to attend to their own structure, getting ready to be able to function optimally, their water is absorbed into their proteinaceous substance. Progesterone and ATP are two of the molecules that help to stabilize that orderly system of proteins and associated water. Estrogen and the inorganic phosphate and ADP that appear when ATP is hydrolyzed shift the balance in cells in the opposite direction, favoring the release of water from the proteins and the activation of the cells. If a person really wanted to get into this, I would probably recommend buying the book Cells, Gels, and the Engines of Life by Gerald Pollack. And he has really nice drawings of what (laughs) Ray is talking about here. And again, nobody needs to know this per se, but it's fun learning about it going multiple levels deeper of Gilbert Ling Association Induction Hypothesis. So there's a very common question of how to understand the dosing of the Progesty product from Kenogen. And so it's very often said that a unpopped popcorn kernel is about five milligrams or so. And people seem to not be able to assimilate that from my limited experience. And so I would just say, if you're really into getting an exact dose, which you don't have to be, like if you take a small excess of progesterone, it's not going to do anything. It's not like T3 where taking too much T3 could cause an issue, especially if a person was a high adrenaline state. However, if a person really wants to know how much they're taking, I'd probably recommend getting these types of measuring spoons, which go down to like a 64th of a teaspoon, 32nd, 16th, 8th, 4th. And if you got a 64th of a teaspoon, that'd be about six milligrams or so. If 
an uh, unpopped popcorn kernel with a vexing image, then you could use something like this. Let's talk about progesty for women. And so this is also from Ray's article, Progesterone Summaries in 2007. He says, for PMS, the normal pattern of progesterone secretion during the month is for the ovaries to produce a large amount in the second two weeks of the menstrual cycle, i.e. day 14 through 28, beginning at ovulation and ending around the beginning of menstruation, and then to produce little for the following two weeks. An average person produces about 30 milligrams daily during the second two weeks. And now on to postmenopause, he says, some women continue the cyclic use of progesterone after menopause, but some women prefer to use progesterone without interruption after menopause for its protective anti-stress effects. Slender people usually find two or three drops are enough, but this amount may be repeated once or twice as needed to relieve symptoms. So just to wrap this up, if a woman is cycling, progesty is supposed to be used post-ovulation, days 14, roughly through 28. Sometimes a person will say, hey, I feel so good. I just need to continually use it. And this is a woman that would be cycling. And from what I understand and from what we talked about with Ray, the liver would get used to the progesterone and it would become less effective. In fact, I was talking to somebody that was having pretty serious symptoms and they told me they were using it consistently. They weren't cycling it. And I didn't think much of it. And then that person had talked to Ray. And the next time I talked to that girl, she told me that Ray had told her that she definitely should cycle. Postmenopause is different. I think it can be used indefinitely. And I've heard of women cycling it two weeks on and two weeks off. And my friend Dodie, who has more experience with this than I do, uh, she, I think, uses it three weeks on and one week off. So there's room to play around with this. And uh, I think it will take some trial and error. So let's talk about using progesty for men. Progesterone is the hormone of femininity. It is the female hormone. I think men can take advantage of it. We apparently produce 12 or 15 milligrams of progesterone per day. And Ray says, after the age of 35 or 40, many men experience decline in their resistance to stress, corresponding to the decline in the protective substances such as DHA and progesterone. Often a small amount of progesterone, five or six milligrams, for example, a drop of progesty the size of an unpopped kernel of popcorn can make a difference, sometimes lasting for a few days or more. Paying close attention, the effects are usually noticeable within half an hour. At a certain level, progesterone can antagonize the effects of testosterone. In younger men, two or three drops can have that effect. So I think it's important for any guy using this to understand that it can pose testosterone. And you can even find an old video of me saying that I didn't think men should use progesty. And I was really wrong about that. It's not that nobody's ever told me they had a numb penis from taking too much progesterone. I have heard that and I've experienced that myself. But you have to really go for it to experience that effect most of the time. And if a guy experienced that with a really small amount of progesty, he's usually probably hypogonadal to begin with, and he possibly needs thyroid hormone to increase the testosterone. So the other thing is if a guy used progesterone and they really liked it, you could mix it with DHEA and you can buy pure bulk DHEA, no affiliation, and you could purchase a milligram scale. And what I do is I measure out the DHEA into this beaker, then I'll pour in the progesterone and then I'll mix it around with this stirring rod. And each bottle of progesty contains 3,400 milligrams of progesterone. You can do this a bunch of different ways. You can make a one to three bottle. You can make a one to five, one to six, whatever you want it. But it is important not to get more than roughly five milligrams of DHEA. For myself, I just mix a one to one bottle of progesterone to DHEA. And that's like my DHEA bottle. I just know that there's always going to be a one to one mixture. Let's talk about troubleshooting. And this is also from progesterone summaries. And Ray says, if a person has an enlarged thyroid gland, progesterone promotes secretion and unloading of the stored colloid and can bring on a temporary hyperthyroid state. This is a corrective process and in itself isn't harmful. A thyroid supplement should be used to shrink the goiter before progesterone is given. So in short, around your thyroid gland, you have the colloid, which is the protein that the T4 is made from. And estrogen inhibits the breakdown of this colloid. And when a person starts taking progesterone, sometimes it will shrink the colloid really quickly and unload a bunch of T4 into the blood. And then a person can feel very hyperthyroid from it. And I've talked to a handful of people that have experienced this. And so it's something to look out for because if you didn't know what was happening, it might be scary. This is the other thing I've heard many, many, many times. So this was in an episode of the podcast with Ray in 2018. And Ray says, one person said that she had no effect from taking 100 milligrams, a fourth a teaspoon of the progesterone and asked her to repeat the dose. She took as much as 400 milligrams and still didn't feel anything. And when she had her blood tested, her estrogen was the highest I've ever seen. It was a hundred times higher than the estrogen should have been. And when your estrogen reaches a certain point, there's no absorptive capacity, no carrying capacity in the blood that can carry enough progesterone to have an effect. And for those people, it's necessary to work on the liver, feeding the liver protein or B vitamins, whatever 
whatever it needs to start detoxifying the estrogen and increase the thyroid if necessary to make the liver metabolize the estrogen. So I actually hear this a lot, especially women will say, hey, I take 100, 200, 300 milligrams and I feel nothing. And that suggests that the estrogen is extremely high. And you could check the prolactin because that's a good proxy for estrogen in the body. And the estrogen serum tests are not that accurate. In fact, sometimes when the estrogen serum tests are low, that means it's extremely high in the tissue. Again, you might want to look into aspirin, making sure they're getting enough calcium, vitamin D, investigate thyroid function, and investigate bowel elimination with something like cascara or the carrots or well-cooked white button mushrooms. There's a bunch of things to try if this is the situation. This is why I like progesterone because it's kind of like a metric in and of itself of how the person reacts to it. If they take five milligrams and feel extremely sleepy, that's way better than taking a hundred and not feeling anything. Because again, that hundred would mean that the estrogen is so high, so stimulating that the progesterone didn't do enough to relax the person. Because when you take the right amount of progesterone, it should make you very relaxed and very tired. So here's one more just to beat into the ground. This is from progesterone summaries. And Ray says, if estrogen is extremely high, even large supplement of progesterone will have no clear effect. In that case, it's essential to regulate estrogen metabolism by improving the diet, correcting a thyroid deficiency, et cetera. So that's it. Just a short one today, guys. This episode is brought to you by my course on Patreon and Gumroad. And this course was inspired by the hundreds, if not thousands of people I've talked to over the last 10 years. And since talking about this with many, many, many people, a lot of questions have come up over and over and over again. And so at the beginning of the year, I sat down and I filmed for many hours trying to put this together. And it goes over thyroid hormone supplementation. It goes over nutrition. It goes over a home environment. It goes over interpreting lab tests. It goes over supplementation. And those were all the areas that people commonly wanted to talk to me about. I actually think there's probably better than talking to me because <laughs> you can stop it and rewind it and have it indefinitely to, to reference. I love talking to people, but sometimes it's information overload. And so this is just honestly probably better because if you're just getting into this stuff and you want to apply these ideas, this is why I made this. So a person doesn't have to feel information overload and they can stop it and take notes and do whatever they need to do. This episode is also brought to you by Kenogen's ProGestE, and you can email Catherine at Kenogen at gmail.com. Ray in 2018 said, I think it's the only good progesterone product. I don't have an affiliation with ProGestE, but I love recommending the product and will continue to do that indefinitely. Okay, that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. I have an amazing audience. Guys, take care. Talk to you soon and peace out.